Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Mitchell Hour Podcast. So the last month, there's been a lot of uh, talk about this Drake and Kendrick beef. I'm going to start off the rip by saying I like both of their music. Both of them are pretty dope, but I'm team Kendrick. Take Kendrick and Drake out of it. I'm a fan of rap. I'm a fan of hip hop. I'm a fan of the culture. So I'm going to try to take my biases out of this and just speak free. All right. So let's jump right into it and be honest. If you fuck with Kendrick, nothing Drake says is going to change your mind. If you fuck with Drake, nothing Kendrick says is going to change your mind. This beef is not going to spill over into street stuff unless... It's their affiliates or the fans. Now, I've been deeply invested into this beef over this month. I have been listening to their music a lot. I've been going back and forth and looking at freestyles and songs and, you know, seeing who started this and who said this and what bars are better and all that. I believe, because like I said, you know, there's both sides are coming out in support of their artist, their favorite artist. And there's a lot of moving the goalposts on both sides. And I will say this. You have a lot of people that are Kendrick fans that are trying to pull up the old video of him, Drake on stage with uh, a young a young fan. You know, Metro Boomin released, well, allegedly uh, released the... Uh, a reference track for a song, uh, one of Drake's songs that Yachty wrote. Uh, and then on the other side, you got um, Drake fans that are dissecting a bar when Drake said, I be with the bodyguard like Whitney. And his fans are saying, hey, Drake really, really, really got something on Kendrick uh, saying that his wife slept with his bodyguard. Then you have Drake fans that are saying, hey, if y'all are going to accuse my favorite artist of ghostwriting, what about Kendrick? And it's a guy that recorded in 95 and wrote it for Kendrick. Now, like I said, I'm going to be transparent i'm gonna be you know i'm not gonna be biased in this conversation as far as both sides are concerned these ghostwriting allegations for kendrick have been debunked the ghostwriting allegations for drake has been debunked personally i feel like this is a a beef between the fans uh, like i said earlier both fans are moving the goalpost and i don't think either fan base is really thinking um, logically, I think they got blinders on for their favorite artist. And if that's what it is, that's what it is. Calling Drake a pedophile, uh, calling Kendrick a midget is it's, it's getting ridiculous, right? Because like who you like, stop moving the goalposts and think objectively. You know what I'm saying? If, if Kendrick releases a track and it hits like, like that did and then Drake puts out push-ups and some people think it hit harder um, because Drake was really going at a whole bunch of other people. Um, cool. I will say this. I was think, think over the last 10 years, Kendrick's impact and Drake's impact have been felt. You got a lot of people in the game, uh, highly respected people that respect Drake's pen. You have highly respected people, lyricists in the game that respects the way that Kendrick writes uh, his content on his album. So both sides are respected. So it's all about the music. You know what I'm saying? Stop trying to pull up dirt. And stuff like that, because look, 
we see what happened with with Biggie and Pac back in the day, and I'm no no way, shape, or form am I saying that this internet beef that's going on between Kendrick Lamar and Drake fans are anyway anywhere near that. But I'm just saying, let's just enjoy the music. Let's not make these personal attacks, and let's just keep it on wax. Who you like is who you like to change anybody's opinion. Because like I said, whoever has the latest track out is the one who is going to win. And also, I think Drake has an advantage because he's on the internet. And right now, people are saying he won because he's using memes and stuff like that. Um, you know, you got Kanye that jumped in and... Then on the the funnier side of this uh, beef is between uh, Chris Brown and Quavo. The way that Chris Brown and Quavo are going back and forth with each other and their quick responses, they're real hip-hop. And I laugh at that because there's people that are still talking about like that. There's still people talking about push-ups. But this Chris Brown track that he put out, Weakest Link, and the drunk that Quavo put out, nobody's going to be talking about that next week. They're going to go back, and nobody's taking that serious. <sighs> this is getting kind of ridiculous. Let's keep it hip-hop, and it's all about the culture. It's not about who can put out the best memes. Who It's, it's about who can spit the best over a beat and say the most stinging words that will last forever. People are still talking about ether. People are still talking about super ugly and takeover. So do I feel that uh, years later, do I think that this uh, Drake and Kendrick beef is going to be talked about? It's cool for the moment. It's bringing the competition back into hip hop. And I'm going to end on this note. In my personal opinion that you have to be prepared for if you call yourself the best. Number one, first and foremost, you got to write all your lyrics. And number two, if you call yourself the GOAT, you got to be ex expecting people to come at you. You can't say that, oh, people clout chasing. You can't say that. If you call yourself the best, somebody's going to challenge you for your spot. And also, nobody's really winning except for the record labels. Drake and Kendrick are both rich. And like J. Cole said, if you broke and you come millionaire, the joke's on you. So fans can go back and forth with each other. But both of these dudes are touching money that we can only dream of. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Mitchell Hour Podcast. I'm out. Comment and subscribe, and until then, stay.